but but we want to give them that opportunity uh, to do assessments in here. So this session is going to be all about assessment options. There are three of them for kindergarten and first grade. My name is Craig Wilmore, and I'm going to be walking you through both uh, this PowerPoint and also going live digitally and showing you where all of these options are found. Before, as always, we want to make sure we're talking about our norms for professional development, to be committed, to be responsive, to be respectful, and then also be safe. Take care of your needs and respect the ideas of others. Make sure that you've muted your microphone and when the, we have question and answer time, if you want to unmute, you may do that or just type a question in the chat box and we will answer that towards the end. The learning intentions and success criteria for this session are to understand the three options for assessing students in kindergarten and first grade, and then to identify online assessments and how to best use those. Um, the success criteria will be to commit to trying at least two of the three accessible items from Wonders 2023. So as we dive in, we're going to take a look at what options you as teachers have to access the assessments that are available for students in here. One of them is going to be strictly based on you, and that's the rubric. The rubric is probably the easiest of all assessments to do. So we're going to start with the rubric, and the first thing we need to make sure is that each week when you open up your teacher's edition, you're looking at the student outcomes. That text is in your teacher's edition at the beginning of every text set, and it will be a blue page, typically on the left-hand side, and it will have all of the skills that you're going to be focusing on in this week. We're taking a look at kindergarten, unit seven, week two right now, and the red checked mark items in there, if you look down at the phonological awareness, you're seeing that we are going to be assessing phoneme substitution. Underneath the phonics, we're going to be assessing our students with the letter G and the letter W, and then we're doing high uh, or fluency with high frequency words. These are options, and then down at the reading portion at the very bottom, it's identifying events in a story. So learning how to identify specific events. As we move over into a first grade, you're going to see even more under that reading. So you have your phonics, your fluency, um, but you also have your reading, identifying, describing the events in a story, including cause and effect. That red check mark means it's an accessible skill your communication up there with the writing, and then also your conventions over on the right-hand side. So as we take a look at those red check items, we dive into our teacher's edition. And in here, I've gone in, remember we were looking at the G and the W for kindergarten. This is what it looks like. And so I, uh, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is the first, you click on the assessment and data tab at the very top of your landing page on your teacher center. Then you click and go down to where it says rubrics. This pulls up this page here based on the unit over here on the left-hand side and the week that you are in. It changes each and every week. The next thing you'll notice is down here, there is a blank line where it says new rubric name. You have to write something in there in order for this to start to be in the scorable format. This is what the rubric is going to look like when you pull it up. This happens to be a first grade. So I'm gonna take a moment right now and I'm going to let's continue walking through this and then I'll go live and show you actually how it works. So once you've created your rubric or once you've created the line. So the words you've written something in that blank, it opens up the score button and then pulls something like this up. Now, unless you're doing. Um, the 95 percent group 
in alignment with what we're doing here. You don't need to do the phonics portion of this, but we are focusing on the comprehension. So as you see in this first grade, we're looking at our controlled vowels, but we're looking at events, cause and effect. We're looking at high frequency words, and then we're working with text features, descriptive words. Those are all accessible items that we want our students to be able to uh, gather and, and gain access to. When you're using a rubric, there are three things to keep in mind. The first one is going to be your students are going to be listed along the top of this rubric. So all of your students for your class will be listed there. The next thing you need to make sure is you click on the student and then click on all of the areas that you're going to assess them. This is a visual or this is an ob observation assessment that you are doing based on how your students are doing with their shared read and with their anchor text. Can they comprehend and can they identify cause and effect in a story? Once you've graded all of your students, you need to make one last click, and that's going to be the submit button. And what this does, it sends all of this data for today to our data collection. Now, you are allowed to do as many rubrics during the week as you feel necessary. You can always do them on day two after you've taught the mini lessons on comprehension skills and strategies. You can also do them on day four or day five after you've done the anchor text and the paired reading selection. Let's go live right now and go into my first grade account here. And I'm going into the teacher version of that. Open that up and here we are. Uh, I'm just going to say we're in unit five, week one for this one. Okay. Up at the top, we go to our assessment and data. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger for us. The assessment and data, and you come down to that rubric. When I click on the rubric, it's going to pull up what it is we are assessing right there. So here we're focusing on our controlled vowels, AR, the narrator, high frequency words, and then text features, photographs, and illustrations. You have two ways to do this. You can go down to the blank and start typing, R controlled, and notice how it turns my score button on. To me, that's a lot of typing, and I don't like typing. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to highlight, and maybe I'm not going to do the, the phonics or the, the phonemic awareness portion just the comprehension. So I'm going to copy, control copy. I come down to this blank and I go control V paste. And it now puts in there this narrator, high frequency words and so on. When I click score, it's going to bring up all of my students along the top here. And then it's going to give all those areas that I am assessing. Now remember, I may not be doing the phonics in wonders because you're doing the 95% group. So you can go down here to the comprehension, maybe even some high frequency words. You've got these two comprehension skills and strategies and then high frequency. Let's just say my student up here, befriend, is struggling a little bit with comprehension. So let's say we're going to give him approaching level. But he does very well with the on level, with the, or sorry, with the high frequency words. When I move to be fun, it pulls up here and I'm going to do, say, let's just say this child is doing very well. I would not assume that many of my students are going to be labeled at the beyond level. This means they've got it. They're very sure of it. They can even go above and beyond. So the majority of your students, if you've been doing this with comprehension, should be somewhere between the approaching level and the on level with these skills. I'm just going to quickly go through. I am going to put one student on the high frequency words as beyond level. 
whoops. And then remember, the last thing we need to do is go up here and click Submit. Once I click that Submit button, it's taken care of. It's done. It has gone into my data collection. And I'm going to go into my data collection shortly to show where that is and what happens. So that's the rubric. Again, the rubric can be done as many times during the week as you feel you need that. I would suggest a minimum of once per week. And that would be between day two and day three after you've done the shared read and you've started the anchor text because that's where this comprehension strategies and comprehension skills are going to find themselves where you're teaching them. Now, the second data collecting option are the games. And not just any games, they're the games that are in the blue triangle at the very end of each week. So you have to scroll through. You see down in the bottom right-hand corner, my little arrows. I've moved to the very last page in first grade here because that's where these games are found. In hit this one, we have events, cause and effect. We also have in here um, high-frequency words. You do have some phonics in here that doesn't hurt for the students to play. And then you have text features, descriptive words. As you have the students play these, you need to assign these for it to collect data. The students have access to these games every week, but until you assign it, it's not going to collect the data that you want from here. That data, when they go in here, I took this example of a phonics lesson and the students play the phonics lesson. They go through all 10 of these pages. And at the end, they get a notification of how well they did. This student got an excellent work and it took them two minutes and 29 seconds. And they have eight correct and two incorrect. These are reports that you as teachers do not get. So if you are going to ask your students to play these digital games, when they get to this point, you want them to raise their hand and have you come over and look at this and then click on that final report down there at the bottom. And it's going to pull up exactly how the students did with that game. With eight correct, it will show which ones they got wrong what were the order of the words or the answer choices in there? So I'm going to go back into my teacher edition. I'm going to show you where we are. Click the wonders button up here. That brings me to my home page for this week. Down in the bottom right hand corner are all of my games. So you can see all the games here. There are, I'm showing 12 of 30 games. So that means I need to scroll to the next page. I see even more games in here. And then I scroll to the last page. And here's where I'm going to find my high frequency game with the blue triangle, my uh, narrator, my phonics, and then my text features of illustrations right there. These games are the ones that will collect data if they have a blue triangle. So I know that I want to do comprehension. So I'm going to click on the little cogwheel. I will assign this resource. It brings me to the assignment page. So I'm just going to type in here gameplay. Does it require teacher review? Not really, because I don't really get to see anything except for the final numbers in the data. That's why you want to ask the students to raise their hands when they're done so that you can see that report. I am going to type a little note in here to my students and play this game all the way to the very end. Before you click out, raise your hand and have your teacher look at your work. Okay, 
you give it a start date, a due date, and an expiration date. And then you assign it to your students. If you feel comfortable that all of your students might be able to do this, click all. If you want to hand select which students are going to be playing the game, you can go through and hand select. Maybe you want different students playing different games to gather data. I then go in, click the assign button, and I get this has been done. So now I have that gameplay right here. When the students are finished with it, it will show all of their names right here, and it will show if they've submitted it, and then if I have given any comments back to them. So this is where you will find those assignments once they've done it. Hey, Craig, can I ask a clarifying question? It's Leanne. You bet. So when the students are asking, are saying to the teacher, raising their hand that they're done, and they come over to look at the score where they have so many out of so many, and then they click on that, and that gives them what the student chose for the answer. That's the only time when the teacher can see the correct word and what the students responded to, right? So that's where that, to do That it. is correct. This final okay. report that we're looking at right now, unfortunately, at this time, a teacher does not get this report. Only a, if I download it in that moment right there. Yeah, if you download it here or if you print it, it can be printed. Now, most student computers are not connected to a teacher's printer. So this is why it's important for a teacher to have the student raise their hand and come over and look at this because the first thing they'll get is this um, final report op opportunity where it says they did excellent work or good work or needs some help. And then the time on and how many they got correct and how many incorrect. Once they get here, if a teacher has them raise their hands, they come over, a teacher clicks that final report, and then they can see this. If they want to then connect the, the, the student computer to the printer and print it, or they just want to see it, they can see this. But this is the only time that you're going to get a report like this, which is uh, a little frustrating on my end. I, I would like to have this report at any given time. Yeah, no, I appreciate you clarifying that. Thank you. You bet. Okay, the third option that we have for taking or for assessing our students. So we've seen the rubric. We've seen the games that collect data. The last one here is going to be the online assessment center. So in your teacher's digital space, you go to assessment and data at the top. You go to the online assessment center, and that's going to bring up these items down below. So we click up there. We click on the online assessment center, and then the most common assessment that kindergarten and first grade would probably want to look at will be the PMA selection tests. These are progress monitoring assessments. These are opportunities to test the students on fresh reads and then on vocabulary that they have been working on in this section. When you open up the progress monitoring, you will see it pulls up unit and week. Each unit, each week will have its own progress monitoring. I'm just, I've just gone to unit five, week two, grade one, progress monitoring. And over on the right-hand side, you see that student preview or the kebab menu, the three little vertical dots. When you click on those, it brings up these icons. A student preview shows you what the students will be doing or looking at. Then you see the edit button. If you feel like the assessment is a little too long, you can edit the assessment, go in and remove some of the questions. Or if you feel like you want to add something in there, such as an oral response from the students, you can have the students do that also. The third button down allows you to assign this assessment to the students. If you have any visually impaired students, you have the print option where you can then print and change the font size all the way up to a 20 point font and change it to three different font styles. Um, the export made metadata 
is only exporting what each assessment standard is being addressed. So as we move in, clicking on that kebab, it brings up that online assessment center. In kindergarten and first grade, all of the questions are read out loud. The stories are read out loud. So those little um, triangles that we see there are the little buttons the students push. It gives them the directions and then it clicks and you play the story. And then at the top in the center, you have the question. Again, all of it is read out loud to the students with a human voice. It is not Siri that's doing the reading. It is a voice actor that's doing that reading. Also, you're going to find things such as I, I mentioned, vocabulary. So vocabulary will be included in these along with comprehension questions. My suggestion is open up the printed version of the assessment. Look at that because the digital version is going to look exactly like that print version. So let me go online into our assessment. And I know we're getting short on time here, but I want you to see this online assessment center. When I open this up, it's going to bring up my online assessments down here towards the bottom. It's taking just a minute to load those. So here's my Wonders Grade 1 Progress Monitoring Assessments. When I click open on that, I want to just go through until I get to the Unit 5 Week 2 that I was looking at right there. If I want to see this assessment in a printed version, I would just come up here to the printable assessments, click on that, and it's going to give me Unit 5 Week 1, which is right here. So my progress monitoring assessments are right here. Here's my unit five week one assessment. When I click on that, it brings up the, the, the physical version of that. So here's unit five week one, and here's the story, Lark and Martin, and then answer questions one to five. So here's the story, it's read out loud. And then we have the five questions that are comprehension. And then we have, here's some other questions. Choose the best answers. Then we have some uh, fill in the blanks. Listen while your teacher reads the directions here. And then we get down here to the last questions. Okay. We would stop there. And here's the teacher script. If you're going to do paper pencil version of that. If you're doing the the digital version of that, it's going to have all of those questions and the teacher does not really have to be a, a part of the, the reading there. So if I go to the progress monitoring, I go to that unit five, week two, and I just click the student preview. Let me go over here to share the this will pull up what a student sees if they're taking this on an iPad or on a Chromebook. So there are 15 questions. I start and it will bring up the first question here. And this is what it says. Read the story, then answer the questions. Okay, then they have here. Kurt and Herbie in space. You can tell by looking at the sky, says Herbie. The sun is small. So it's going to read the whole story and then it reads the question. Kurt says that the sun looks small because it is so bright, nearby, far away. And so you can go to the next question. We know that the first five questions are comprehension questions. So when we go to that question six, Here's choose the best answer. Which word is a stronger way to say turns around quickly? Heads, passes, whirls. And then as I move through, I've got additional questions. 
I will say a word in parts. D -er -t. What word do you make when you blend these sounds together? Listen to these answer choices. Stir, dirt, girl. So Click on the see, picture that has the same sounds these, as... You may want to go in and remove er. anything that is tied to phonics or phonological awareness so that you're shortening the test because you're doing that with the 95% group. When we get down to those very last questions, we know these are teacher directed. It's telling the teacher, but now the computer becomes the teacher. Which word means someone who travels? Traveling, traveled, traveler. And so you can see the online assessments here allow you to be able to go in and provide information for the students. Now, we also have all of the selection tests. So you've got the selection test starting with unit four. So you read the story, Little Rabbit. You read the story, Animal Teams in unit four, Vulture View and High Fly Guy. Those are stories you also have access to towards the latter part of the year where it's assessing the story that you read from the anthology. So keep in mind, there's a variety of assessments that are there. One other assessment that is available, I don't know if you'll want to do this one, are the unit assessments. The unit assessments tend to be a little bit lengthy. So as I click in this grade one unit five, I'm gonna come in here and I see all of a sudden there are 30 question, 31 questions. And that last one is an essay type question. So keep in mind, a lot of these are going to be phonics and phon phonemic awareness portions in those unit assessments. They will also have a story. They will also have grammar. But, uh, oh, sorry, didn't want to leave the page too soon there. I did want to show the data dashboard. So the data dashboard, all of these items feed into the data dashboard. So it, the games, the assessments, and the rubric all feed into my data dashboard to provide me with certain types of data. So let me go into, let's see if I've got it now for unit five, week two. My computer's being a little bit slow today. Nope. Let me switch down here to... I want to find the, a week here that's got some color over here on the left-hand side. And I thought I had it there. There we go. So, for example, this high-frequency words piece right there. When I click on that, it's going to show me which students are in the orange or approaching level. I have two students. I have assignable resources that I can provide those students in a small group setting. I have on-level students here that will provide that I can give them these additional items there. There are five reports. This is just a recommendation report. The activity report is going to tell me how many things I have done with my students so far, not a huge amount with this class, but I also have progress reports. So if I go into a progress report, this is going to show progress over time since September until January. I have some information in there as well as scores. I also can go in and see a grade report card. So a variety of different types of things. I can click on the student, and it's going to pull up how this student is doing, the most recently scored activities, and then the highest areas of performance and the lowest areas of performance for that specific student. So you get a lot of reports and data from your students based on that. And so as I was showing here, um, this is a different unit and week, unit two, week one for first grade. And you can see I have a couple of students at approaching level, some students at the on level. But then I have all of these items are what go in here, the assessments, the games, and the rubric. 
the practice that you see there is only for grades two through five. So you have assessments, games, and rubrics that are going to feed into the data collection. You get these nice reports about the students and then printable reports that you can provide to parents outside. So one thing I want you to do is, um, is share one thing that you can start to do this week, whether it's the rubric, the game, or maybe the online assessment. And then finally, which of the three assessment types are you ready to use? Maybe you're already using one of them and you're ready to try another one. Which one are you ready to try next? So we'll leave the rest of this up for any questions. I don't see anybody else on. Thanks, Craig. We appreciate oh, your time. So nice yeah, job. Nice job. Um, remember, if you are on, you can always access this on Canyons U, and there's a bite sized PD. And if you want to get re your credit, there is where you go. I'm going to stop recording.